So today's show on the Made to Thrive episode is Dr. Oli. He's one of the founding biohackers in the world, and he's the author of the Biohacker Handbook, which is a 544-page encyclopedia on biohacking. He's the co-founder of the Biohacker Center, and he's been running biohacking summits for many years. Welcome to the show, Dr. Oli. Hey, thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be in this side of the world. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's so encouraging to uh, have a podcast with another biohacker. Uh, I've had one with uh, Boomer Anderson, who's also a biohacker. But for us as a sort of a very rare species, uh, and I'm possibly one of the only biohackers in, in Africa, tell us a little bit about your story because you are a physician, you're medically trained, uh, and now you've moved to a lot of this field of biohacking in these summits. Yeah, so... Um... Do you want a long story or a middle version? Or I think a middle version, version uh, Dr. Ali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you think about biohacking, it's uh, nothing really like magical or mystical. It's, it's about uh, preventive health. It's about making yourself more uh, in tune with your body, with your mind, and more resilient to different kind of challenges. But... Uh, to go back into my life, uh, I've been interested in nutrition for a very long time, maybe 25 years. And uh, since from the age of 15, I began cooking with my mom. And, you know, we, we always wanted to make the best or, or the healthiest possible foods uh, available at then. Of course, the knowledge was quite different there back then. And uh, fat, fat was the em enemy. And, and you know, you know yeah. the story, how it goes. Sure. And... Uh, uh, I became a medical student in 2000 and uh, I've been also very interested in the human body, the human physiology, the anatomy and basically how, the, how the, this vehicle works. And uh, mm -hmm. I've been training, like doing sports and weightlifting and, and stuff like that basically all my life and I've been mm -hmm. very active. Uh, since my childhood and so the movement and the nutrition part have been been like very obvious uh, but I was kind of lacking the recovery and sleep and the mindfulness mind part and uh, mm -hmm. if you go into two, year 2006 I graduated from the Helsinki University Medical School and uh, I was already back then almost like burned out and, and severely sleep deprived and chronically stressed but i just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and and uh, from 2006 to 2011 or 10 i did this um, medical practice that required me to be on 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 the alarm state or on call basically 24 7 and at worst it was like 100 hours per week of being on different kind of ERs and, and places like that. So, so that left, left the mark on my physiology for quite a bit. And uh, I was like sympathetically, the sympathetic nervous system was super active all the time. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I overtrained and eventually that led into biohacking and taking care of my body as a primary means of, mm. of living this life. And cutting down this kind of work and more gravitating towards preventive health. And mm. 2016, we published the Biohackers Handbook in Finnish, uh, the mission manual of the human body, and 2019, finally, in English. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, the manual you never had for your system. Uh, every car, every electronic instrument has a manual, but we, we basically don't. So we wanted to write, write that and... Brilliant. So well, that's yeah. that's the middle story of, of yeah, my path good. and good. yeah. But I want to take a bit of a deeper dive. I mean, I know the handbook is so comprehensive. There's a lot of you know work that you've been doing in all different areas. Uh, but why did you not choose the traditional model? You were burnt out. You were tired. You were exhausted. You couldn't sleep. Many people that go through medical school get indoctrinated just to take more sleeping tablets to try and use yeah. big pharma to deal with your problems. You know, uh, what gave you sort of the, the motivation to go the biohacking sort of natural medicine, functional mm. medicine route? Well, basically because this you just mentioned didn't work. So, I, yeah. of course, I went to the route 
mm. root of the conventional medicine and tried possibly almost every sleeping pill there there is well not not every but you know a lot of different kind of sleep medications uh, i even went to a psychologist and uh, went through different phases of psychotherapy which were of course really helpful but they didn't solve my mm. sleep issues and and uh, the over over uh, trained state i was in basically the nervous system state so uh, i was i wasn't feeling good so that led me into finding out more solutions outside of the quite narrow minded medical field that it is mm. at the moment so um this is kind of the story behind quite a few biohackers they have some kind of uh, health issues some kind of uh, problems they have overcome by their own curiosity and their own research and then they want to share it to others mm. great can you for my audience and we're going to be putting on this youtube as well the video just explain in your own words what biohacking is biohacking is um, finding the homeostasis to your system uh, having more energy, uh, be more productive, being more healthy. We are technological, biological, and natural means. So we are not excluding anything. Uh, even conventional medicine has its mm. place. But you can combine the best of the nature. You should be connected to nature. You should have on-place diet that fits your personal needs. You mm. can, but you don't have to incorporate techn technological uh, kind of inventions mm. so there are many layers to it and at, at bets you incorporate all uh, kind of modalities to your own self and you you are your own experiment so the n equals one uh, fits here very well so you are your own own life's exper experiment <laughs> brilliant thank yeah. you so much now tell me we're going to walk through your morning routine your evening routine your weekly rhythms and your monthly moments, just to give people an understanding, you know, because being South Africa's pro biohacker here and people being unaware of it, when we wear funny glasses, when we go out at night, I've never seen anyone wear orange or red glasses ever in my life other than myself and my son. And now my four-year-old daughter's got her own pair as well. But, you know, it's just not known in South Africa. So tell us how you start your morning and we'll just walk through your day, then your week, and then your month. Yeah. So uh, I want to share how I used to start my mornings. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, I'm kind of more like a, an evening person, and uh, I've never liked uh, early morning wake-ups. Never. Even even as a child, that, that was a problem mm -hmm. for me. But I've, I was kind of forced into that rhythm that I needed to wake up too early. So, so the first thing I fixed is, is the rhythm and when I go to work and when I naturally tend to wake up. So uh, the morning starts for me, if, if nobody wakes me up, is, is mm. that I wake up without an alarm clock. Mm. Unless I have, have a, like an early meeting, which I usually don't have ever. Mm. So, so um, kind of more like a natural wake up without having this stressful like or something yeah. you know waking up from the wrong totally wrong phase of the sleep if, mm. if you're very unlucky yeah. Yeah. and a stress stress-free wake up and then uh, natural light mm. becomes first of course the curtains up and i usually go outside almost immediately no no matter what what the condition of the weather is of course if there is sun uh, i stay stay there longer I go there barefoot and to our yard just to have a connection with the natural elements. And you need light, natural light to regulate your circadian rhythm. So, so that is the key. Uh, after that becomes hydration because you're, you kind of get dehydrated dur during the night. And uh, hydration is, is an art unto itself. So you can play around with many kinds of things. I like to have some salt with with uh, highly fresh uh, mineral water or or even better better like uh, straight from the natural springs if mm -hmm. possible uh, some lemon and uh, maybe some greens just just to have a good good amount of hydration mm. uh, then some movement 
a little bit movement. I don't like to exercise in the morning because it, I, I don't like to go into the alarm state like immediately, but you know, soft movement for your body. Uh, I've had the chance to have an infrared sauna in my mm. apartment for seven years. So that is also part of my morning routine. I go there, have a little sweat and warm up my body. And after that, I go into a cold shower. So you have this hot and cold alteration, which has been shown to regulate the nervous system balance and improve your mood and, and basically overall energy. Uh, then I go and make some biohackers coffee, which is usually usually this fat-based coffee, you know, different kind of elements, elements mm. in there. A lot of great recipes are actually found in, in our biohackers handbook. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, I can, of course, share what I put in there if you... Yeah, go for it. Like I think know. it's interesting. You know, and also, like, yeah. how long would you be in the infrared sauna? I mean, I've got an infrared yeah. sauna. It's EMF-free. You know, it's an incandescent bulb. I'm very happy. I've tested it, you know, from a radiation perspective, which is important. Yeah. Now, how long are you going to sweat for? And, and what's in your coffee? <laughs> yeah, so I have the clear light sauna, which is uh, basically MF free. Uh, I really love it. I'm usually there, depending on my schedule, anything between 20 to 40 minutes, even 40 minutes if I want the real, real like hardcore sweat and mm. I, I feel like I need, need more sweat. Uh, in my coffee, I, I use Finnish Chaga coffee or Reishi coffee, kind of like a mixture. So I, I actually like them both. And I, I always use AeroPress to kind of press it myself. Mm. I don't like the coffee machines at all. Okay. Uh, I mix there some caprolic acid, the C8, that's, uh, that's a fuel for the brain. Like you can feel it within 30 mm. seconds when you, when you have it. Uh, some vanilla, uh, cinnamon, uh, some hydrolyzed collagen, nice. uh, powdered bone broth. And maybe some other spices, especially in the winter time, maybe some okay. cayenne and, and so on. Yeah. And put it in blender. Ah, yeah. One one thing I forgot is alpine raw butter. <laughs> okay. Not not too much, but maybe like half a, a tablespoon. Mm. But Tell us a bit give... more about what is that alpine raw butter? Is it just a raw butter that you find or is it specific? It is uh, a specific butter from uh, the Alps in Italy. Uh, so they breed there in, in the altitude about 2,000 meters. Their flora and fauna is uh, over 300 different plants. So that wow. is, in my opinion, one of the purest butters you can actually have. Mm. So uh, you can actually almost taste the flowers in, in the butter. Wow. It's, it's so fresh. And, and wow. uh, wow. Now uh, I haven't had that for two months because of the COVID. Mm. And the issues there, but I'm about to get again two kilos of that next week. So I'm <laughs> kind of thrilled about that. <laughs> Did you notice the difference not having it? Was it like significant to your sort of? Yeah, taste of... taste wise yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, of course, you you don't really necessarily feel yeah any difference, but taste wise. So uh, I'm pretty sensitive taste buds uh, because I've mm. cleared my diet from any crap that's that's uh, affecting the taste mm. buds but uh, i don't drink it like immediately so uh i kind of like microdose my fatty coffee so i still actually have it here oh wow uh, i i made this at 10 a.m so now it's 6 6 p.m so uh, and there's uh, almost half left so i i'm sipping it here and there okay. uh, i don't eat usually anything in the morning i just mm. hydrate myself also with some mineral water uh, electrolytes and salt uh, and I do basically intermittent fasting on a daily basis the length you know kind of varies depending on, on my family mm. and if I have time to eat here or if I want to like disrupt my flow and, and so okay. on so okay. that's my morning that's your morning <laughs> <laughs> and are you still seeing patients or are you fully a biohacker at work are you writing I know you've got a whole bunch of content from your gut protocols to your keto recipes. I mean, you've got incredible resources online from, you know, webinars and course content. What are you doing mainly part of the day? Well, there you have it, actually. So I quit taking patients two and a half years ago. So that was kind of a four-year process into this kind of situation that I am and we are as a company at the moment. So we have the Biocar Center that's uh, basically running 
all these things and I'm responsible for all the content uh, I, we, we create. So different kind of books, courses, and uh, Teemu Arena is responsible for our events. So he's the mastermind of creating all these amazing events. And we actually have our 11th Biker Summit summit coming in in the uh, half of october okay. so there's a lot of work in these i do uh face-to-face -face, like one-on-one -on -one remote consultations okay. also but they're not like medical mm. uh, appointments they're preventive health and biohacking appointments okay. so th th these are also available i do them in english all around mm. the world if, if uh, necessary of course majority of the customers are, are based in Finland. Okay, great. So then midday carries on, you don't really eat, and then just tell us a little bit about your evening routine or you know how you set yourself up from a feeding point of view and from a biohacking yeah. point of view. So usually I work out in the evening or early mm -hmm. evening. For example, yesterday I did this uh, quite heavy sandbag carry Mm. workout uh, at 7 p.m. so mm -hmm. kind of ladish uh, so but usually around six or seven I do the workouts they're not very long but they're like very effective and my frequency is quite high but how I used to train was that I did have like two and a half hour sessions mm. and then I was so trashed <laughs> after that for maybe two three days that I couldn't do anything and uh, I didn't want that anymore. So higher frequency, lower volume and, and, uh, and the time. Uh, I go again to the infrared sauna after the workouts. Same session, cold shower. And usually after that we eat family-like dinner. And for me it's a huge dinner. I, I might take like one and a half hours to actually finish it. So I like eating slow. And... Uh, for example, if you compare me to Temu, my partner in crime <laughs> in Biker Center, he's like super fast. So usually I've had like a few mouthfuls and he's already eaten everything. Mm -hmm. So I mean, uh, physiologically, it's better to chew your food. I mean, there's a lot of research on what happens, you know, from your gut preparation and all the enzymes and the digestion that happens in your mouth and just smelling the food. So taking yeah. a while. I remember my grandparents came from Cyprus and, you know, they used to have lunch and it'd take a three, four hour process. You know, that's how they nice. used to eat, you know, yeah. so the Mediterranean <laughs> way of eating is so oh, beneficial yeah, I love that. to the process, you know. I tell yes, me a little bit yes. about uh, your movement because, uh, you know, I've just now uh, looked at Kartsu. We, we're the sole distributor for these blood flow restriction and modulation mm. bands uh, and X3. I uh, interviewed John Jackwish. Uh, a couple yeah. of weeks ago, so we're going to be trying to get that out to South Africa. Tell me your view on uh, blood flow modulation. Uh, they like to call mm. it rather than blood flow restriction or occlusion therapy. Yeah, it's it's perfect that you have John also in the mm. podcast. So uh, mm. I was introduced to him uh, by Ben Greenfield yeah. maybe one and a half years ago. So ever ever since then, I've been using the X3 bar, and mm. that's absolutely incredible. So. Yeah. Uh, you can work out very frequently. You get the stimulus that you usually don't get with weights. Mm. I, I wouldn't say never, but it, it's a lot harder. And uh, you don't really get delayed onset muscle soreness. So that lets you work out even like six times per week. So I've seen dramatic results. And uh, actually two months ago, I or three months ago, I began incorporating blood flow restriction with the X3 bar. Mm. and oh my god that's uh, even <laughs> even more insane like results uh when you compare it to how much uh, time you put put into that so uh that also led to that notion that i didn't even have to train that often with the extra bar because the stimulus the stimulus was so much higher with the blood flow restriction mm. Mm. And uh, a physiotherapist that I go like on a monthly basis has been seeing the progress and development of my body in the last two years. And he's like, wow, you're a totally different animal that you were back then. So uh, you can do everything with more wisdom and uh, mm. by combining different kind of modalities and trying out what fits for you. So 
the stimulus, the, the blood flow restriction stimuli is, or are rather, um, it's so unique. You, you don't really get them from anywhere else. Yeah. And it's quite easy. Of course, it demands, it requires mental uh, effort a lot because the, the mindset, okay, oh, no, it hurts, you can stop now. No, mm. no, keep on pushing. No, no, yeah. no, no, keep on pushing. Mm. So uh, I actually had uh, two of my friends uh, last Sunday to do the pool workout with X3 bar yeah. and the calf races with yeah. the blood flow restriction. Oh my God, that is that is some torture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I'm totally on, on to it. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Any other type of movement that you functional movement exercises that you do or anything else like Pilates or yoga you incorporate into your week at all? Yeah, usually. So in the mornings, I, when I go outside barefoot, I kind of like do free flow movements. It might be some Tai Chi type of movement, even some Qigong like energy work, mm. or I might do some yoga stretching, yoga poses, uh, whatever feels good to my body at the that day so basic uh, movement flow is, is always there uh, every day but i also love to train outside so for example yesterday i had a really nice sandbag like heavy carry workouts up and down the stairs you can actually see these workouts from my instagram so i i put there every now and then it's it's at uh, Olli sovi okay. <laughs> so my my account uh you know, functional training besides the extreme strength training. Uh, I love mm. to play different kind of sports. Yeah. Uh, my background is in basketball. So I used to be, play basketball as a kid, st- kid and uh, football and uh, soccer and all, all kinds of things. So every weekly or, or rather on a weekly basis, I go to play this family football or soccer with my daughter. Okay. And she's uh, four and a half years old. And it's really fun. And I, I do the same stuff as they mm-hmm. do. And, uh, you know, s- sprint there and do do different kind of uh, uh, practices they are doing. So Great. having a play, playful mind. So that's, mm-hmm. that's the Important. key. So you're probably training, what, about six times a week, Dr. Ali? Or are you training sometimes twice a day? I mean, you're doing infrared sort of sometimes twice a day? No, uh, I don't really count. So um, I used to do that. I I used to be very meticulous, you know, Mm. having written down every possible workout. Mm. And I remember, remember maybe like 10 years ago saying that I haven't missed a week of working out in five years, but I don't think, think like that anymore. So I don't really count. Of course I use this uh, uh, web paste or it it is also an app called Heya Heya. It's Finnish. You can put your workouts there, and I've been using it mm. since 2010. Okay. And uh, there is quite a bit of workouts, but uh, I don't really like think in advance that how many times per week yeah. I do. I, I do the base of my body and how I feel. If I don't feel like it, and I, I feel that okay, I need more recovery, then I I simply don't do it. So. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Now, how do you uh, other than feeling your recovery? How do you measure that? Do you Measured on, on, on blood work, on your aura ring. Yeah, yes, yeah. my, my aura yeah. ring as well. Okay. <laughs> it's like boom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice, you have the silver, silver yeah. one. So, yeah. yeah, I've been using aura ring three and a half years. Mm-hmm. So, that's a stable, stable for me. And it's uh, the most important uh, tool for me, sleep wise and, and recovery okay. wise and nervous system wise. Uh, I used okay. to have, like, if you have had interviewed me six months ago, I would have had a bias strap in this hand mm. and a Garmin Vivo uh, mm. Move HR in this hand. But uh, during my summer vacation, I just dropped them off mm. and I haven't put, a, put them on since because uh, okay. I'm quite in tune to my body. So okay. uh, after wearing the Garmin Vivo, which measures the stress and, and the HRV throughout the day, I, I kind of know where I'm at. Mm. But it doesn't mean that I'm not picking it up again. So, yeah. uh, but at the moment I'm not doing any more. So, okay, let's take a bit. after you've had your dinner. What are you up to in your evening routine? Yeah. So uh, that's a meticulous uh, recovery routine. So um, I use a neurosonic low-level whole body vibration uh, kind of sofa or divan. So 
that is Finnish in, in, innovation and their system is absolutely incredible. So you go lie down basically on, on like a divan or, or good, good sofa and you have these subtle vibrations going on different parts of the body and they are programmed to be almost the same frequency as when cats heal their uh, wounds and, and like injuries, you know, purring. Okay. So there are between like 25 hertz and 30, 34 hertz is the major, major frequency. Uh, the range goes from 10 hertz to 100 hertz, but it's uh, absolutely relaxing because you got you feel vibration immediately. It's not some device that you don't feel. Mm. You feel the vibration. And it sets the tone that the nervous system go to go more into parasympathetic mode. And uh, I really feel the difference, especially if I'm traveling or going away from home, not having the device. So okay. that's a 41 minute program every single evening. Wow. And uh, after that, I use my Beamer mat, which is a PMF kind of microcirculatory uh, stimulating device so that that has also been absolutely incredible mm. i've used that past two and a half years in recovery wise so okay. these kind of recovery hacks are like a stable every evening uh, after that i go to bed do some meditation usually around 30 to 45 minutes i'm lying on my spike mat to get some oxytocin endorphins and my wife has usually been sleeping already for a few hours so I, i'm kind of a more night owl type yeah. okay. person so so you've got yeah. an acupuncture mat that you lie on for a while yeah. and just stimulates those points to help you sleep yeah. your meditation do you use any sort of apps do you use brain fm or do you use anything specifically from a meditation point of view uh, it, it it kind of varies. So depending on on the situation, my my feelings and and basically what what it's at at the moment. So I I love Brain FM. I usually use it uh, during the daytime, even when I work. Mm. Uh, I kind of finish my meditation with the Shift State app, which is a breathing uh, like a, like an intuitive learning breathing app. Mm. So uh, that is that is something I've always finished the meditation, but I use different kind of meditations. Basically, I have a few good accounts I found from YouTube. So they're more esoteric, more mm. like energy work, okay. going into subtle energies and, and like third eye activations and heart activations and okay. more more into this this kind of road. Uh, but that point at times it might be just simple mindfulness practice. Okay. So. Great. Tell me about yeah. your supplements or what you, the stacks that you're using, anything unique that's really, really important that people can try with regards to performance and health. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a bit. Um, I haven't quite counted like the, the amount. It, it, it all, of course, it changes seasonally, mm -hmm. but staples are vitamin D basically every day. Not in, not in the midsummer if there's mm. a lot of sun, but basically every every other time so I I take about 100 125 micrograms every morning. Uh, I usually combine it with vitamin A unless it's not in the same supplementation because uh, yeah. I measured my vitamin A levels and they're not not like uh, as high as they could be. So they're more into the lower lower end of the spectrum. Uh, I use vitamin C also. Uh, few times per per day uh i have a bit of new tropic stacks i love qualia mind so that's kind of my combination uh, i also use lion's man and some finnish uh, rohtos uh, rohtos is a brand that that is really uh, elegant uh, different kind of uh, stacks so i love their like metabolic stack with some uh, mm like uh, piperine, broccoli sprouts, uh, matcha, green tea, polyphenols, more of the, like, like the metabolism of the body. Um, if I've been working out, I use goat colostrum. So that's also healing the gut, but also having a little bit of anabolic signal and recovery mm. signal, L-glutamine, mm. uh, also periodically. I use creatine monohydrate. I've been using that maybe 23 years or something like that you know since the day 
day one. Um, so that's basically the, the daytime stacks. Uh, in the evening, you know, that's part of the imaging routine. So I use uh, triple magnesium with different forms of magnesium, maybe even one gram in the evening. Wow. L-taurine, amino acid, L-glycine, which both help to calm down and, and sleep deeper. Essential amino acids, usually 20 grams in the evening and some electrolytes, you know, just to prepare my body for good sound sleep, to have enough of raw material for neurotransmitter production, okay. growth hormone production, and, and basically overall repair mechanisms. So, and yeah, I think it's also part of the evening supplement yeah. routine. So everything that supports melatonin production and okay. gives you more of a relaxed state. Great. And uh, I know that uh, there's a sort of a debate regarding uh, stimulating mTOR and then uh, the difference between AMPK and cycling that in place. Uh, you know, people saying that uh, your insulin like growth factor shouldn't be too high. Others saying that it needs to be mm. too high. The problem of being in an anabolic phase as you're growing older, the differences between the catabolic and anabolic phase. What are your thoughts on that? It's legit. You know, uh, I love Seamalan's work, mm. uh, the metabolic autophagy, the book. Mm. Now he came up with another book, Stronger Brush Stress. Uh, mm. It's like a really amazing uh, on giving out this kind of information about how to balance the anabolic and catabolic phases. So ideally, you're not uh, throwing into any kind of direction too much. So you need to stimulate mTOR to have repairing processes, muscle growth, and so on. But you also need to have the other side. So kind of like a MPK stimulation and then the more of the catabolic phases, autophagic phases, mm. uh, the NRF2 pathways, and so on, to actually uh, repair the system. So it, it's... a uh, it's a balance between these kind of two modalities. So that's why I like to intermittent fast every day and then do the workout and have a really good anabolic signal, yeah. eat quite a bit of food and nut nutrients and then stop. So that has been working really well. Mm. And uh, ever since, you know, um, becoming familiar with this kind of approach, uh, my body has changed quite a bit and, and uh, mental mental um, power, energy, mm. but also I feel a lot younger. So um, it definitely has a, an impact on aging biology. Brilliant. I interviewed Dr. Jack Cruz uh, uh, last week. I've had a two-part episode with him, and I think he's a phenomenal quantum you know, doctor. Yeah. Uh, tell me your view on how important light is and the role with sort of melanopsin, both being in your eye and in your subcutaneous fat, and in fact, in this uh, photoreceptor in all your arterials. How important is light and is it important more than your, your food diet? Uh, both are important, of course. Mm. They are natural elements. They are all, both are forms of energy. But uh, I wouldn't go into reductionism in to any side. Mm. You need nutrients, you need the basic building blocks for all of your cells, but you also need light stimulus uh, of course, via your eyes, but also via your skin and, and all the aspects it has. Uh, you need sun. Sun is the nuclear plant and it, mm. it's, it's a driving force of all energy and all life. Yeah. So, But you can go overboard with both. You can reduct that everything is light and mm. nothing else matters, or you can say that uh, it's all full that matters. Yeah. So uh, we see more systematic approach on this you know, here in the Biker Center in, in our handbook and my mm. approach is also that this that you need to combine all these elements to have the most um, kind of synergistic effects on your system. Right. So that's that's my yeah. take. That's your take. But I think, I mean, a lot of people are losing the war, even if they, they their food is great or they're eating organic or they, you know, they're doing keto or they're doing, you know, keto cycling or they're doing, you know, whatever. Yeah. They, they're vegans and they and people seem to, the chronic diseases seem to increase, obesity is on the increase. You know, have we sacrificed this ancestral wisdom of living outside to a significant detriment to our health? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that's also why we encourage 
being part of the nature, getting into the nature as mm. often as you can. And that's also my morning practice, mm. like every day. So I have the privilege of living almost in the middle of the nature in Finland, which is uh, has pro- probably the, the lowest uh, like density of population in mm. any country. Mm. A lot of forest, a lot of lakes and... Uh, mm. So we are we are used to that. Uh, it's kind of hard to even imagine like these heavy cities with a lot of pollution, a lot of uh, like artificial lights, uh, mm. artificial technology structures. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't live in an, an environment like that. So in that sense, the nature is is the true mm. healer and and the true like uh, provider here. But of course, we need also food. <laughs> yeah, sure. Look, yeah, it makes you thrive. We believe in ancestral wisdom, which is what you do in getting out into nature and swimming in rivers and going to do forest bathing and all those things that people have been doing for generations, as well as including the bio hacks like the blue blocking glasses that we're both wearing. You know, even for me, Jane, to check your blood pressure, which is such an important thing, is a bio hack in itself. Or taking any type of pharmaceutical is a bio hack because it hasn't been part of thousands of years of our generational, you know. Uh, lifestyles but tell me mm. now what what are the incredible buy hacks i mean we're both wearing blue blocking glasses i think yours would be blocking the light from 400 to 550 nanometers probably something around like that blocking the blue and the green you know we still yeah. the sun's still up here so mine are for 400 to i think 465 nanometers tell me your most important buy hacks mm. that you believe move the needle the most uh besides standing natural things or do you mean yeah here, sure like, yeah i know just the spice natural things which are you know for me walking outside and and walking on the grass which i do every day that people have been doing yeah. that for thousands of years that you know yeah. that's that's not a buy hack for me you know this is mm. just the way i've compartmentalized it in, in my brain uh, going to the sure. doctor and doing 10 blood tests you know and checking the most important things and checking your blood pressure you know that for me that's that's a buy hack you know wearing blue sure. blocking glasses is a buy yeah. but, but you know putting a fire on at night we've been doing for thousands of years uh, that's part mm. of ancestral living but uh, tell me what your you know your most important buy hacks are that, that you wouldn't want to leave home without or that you really do miss mm. if you don't have them yeah so um technology wise of course um uh, i love the ordering but that, that's yeah. not really a buy hack it's more of a quantifying hack yeah but i really I love actually the simple vibration plate. Yeah. So uh, in the morning, I actually forgot to mention that I go into the vibration plate and do some air squats in there. Okay. And the stimuli you get from there, the horizontal stimuli on your cells is an equivalent of like 20, 25 minute walk. Wow. And, and uh, it immediately awakes also the brain, but also the whole body. So we have at our office, a basic vibration plate, uh, ranging from 35 hertz to 50 hertz. And uh, I go there like on an hourly basis. So that's yeah. that's something uh, I actually take with me to my summer cottage, which is like in, in the middle of the nature or, or on the lake. But I, I take it with me. Uh, yeah. I don't take it with me when I travel like outside Finland because it's, yeah. it's too big. So okay. that's, that's one. Uh, is that a Finnish product? Is that from Finland or where is it from? Where can no, they get that? That's a German product. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think they're selling it anymore. It's because this okay. is like seven years old. But okay. but you, there are like quite a variety of different kind of yeah. uh, vibers and plates raging okay. the, the price point. Yeah, like power like, plate. We've got power plates yeah. here in South Africa. They are, of course, amazing, uh, really powerful but you don't necessarily need like this powerful okay. Okay. stuff unless you really want to like kick your ass and, and do a <laughs> kick-ass workout. Yeah. So um, I bet I love my infrared sauna. That's yeah. uh, I kind of wait, especially when it's cold and uh, like dark. I wait to get into the infrared sauna, have a little warmth inside mm-hmm. and a little bit of sweat. So okay. uh, of course that's too big to travel with. Yeah. Uh, I like my um, biker spotlight, which is a portable red light, infrared light, 
therapy okay. device. So that's something I travel with like all the time because it's so, so uh, small. Okay. And if you have any like uh, muscle aches or any, anything mm. you want to have more rapid recovery or even yeah. more energy like to your head yeah. or thyroid yeah. or anywhere else. So that's something that goes okay. with me. Tell me a bit more about that. Where is that from or where, where can you get that? Or is that your product? Yeah. Yeah. You can get it from the Barker Center shop. So we are actually uh, making them ourselves and okay. uh, manufacturing them. So it's Biker Spotlight and BikerCenter.com. So okay. that our store is there. Really convenient. And uh, yeah, and uh, I, I love light. So mm. uh, I've been using this view light uh, infrared intranasal yes. uh, device. So you put it <laughs> like this. <laughs> And and you give like it's it's kind of like a, <laughs> a, a, a Tim put it like laser cocaine or laser coffee okay. into your brain. So you put it in here and it affects the the microcirculation of the nose, which has a straight connection to the brain, and the wavelength of eight hundred and ten nanometers is in the infrared range. So that is something that really wakes my brain up. So okay. I use it that also every morning, and I've been using it almost four years. So, and that's something that goes with me to everywhere. Wow. And the fourth thing is my old school Swedish spike mat. The okay. one I mentioned, I use every, every evening. So that's 14 years old. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so I've been, I've been using it 14 years. It's more of like this hardcore mm. uh, spike, Swedish spike mat that's almost one mm. centimeter long spikes around one centimeter apart from each other. So it's, it's mm. more like a traditional Indian spike okay. mat type and and the stimulus it's it's uh, wonderful of course i okay. use a t-shirt like in between because otherwise yes. it's quite Hectic. quite uh yeah, quite hard <laughs> so <laughs> but you know so, this this yeah. kind of yeah yeah tell me what you think of uh, continuing glucose monitors you know i did a whole podcast with professor tim noakes who you know who's been yeah so you know advocate of the low carbohydrate high fat diet and keto diet and you know like you know like uh, glycolytic variability is so important to sure. maintain a constant glucose, be able to have metabolic flexibility to burn fat and produce ketones. Uh, I've been wearing one for a while. It taught me a lot about certain things that sort of sparked my glucose. They were supposedly vegetables, you know, like peas sparked my, 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 my glucose. Mm. You know, I had a green smoothie with kale and I used to have a green smoothie with celery and I used to have spinach in the morning. I just found that green smoothie used to just spark my glucose and I added yeah. a bit of fat in there and then I added a little bit, two eggs and then I saw that it didn't spike it so high. What do you think of CGM yeah. in the future? I love it. Uh, I wish it would have been available to everybody without diabetes like okay. for a long time and it still isn't. So you basically need a doctor's prescription for that and you need to have a diabetes or need to have a suspicion of diabetes. So okay. uh, we got one from eBay, I think two years ago. So I did some uh, self quantification measurements. Mm. Uh, so I had it for, I think it was at least two weeks mm. and uh, I did all kinds of experiments uh, on, on the base of the blood glucose variation. So I had a very stable blood glucose throughout the day mm. and it kind of uh, followed the circadian biological rhythm of cortisol as well mm. so in the morning a little bit higher and then mm. to watch the day getting lower uh, the biggest spike i got was from uh, ice swimming and a very heavy sauna session so so that that was the biggest spice, mm. uh, spike i got it from it so it went to eight nanomoles per liter uh, I don't know what's in the... We white. use the same. We use the same. Yeah, okay. We're not like so, the Americans. Yeah, we, don't, we use your system. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was pretty high. Uh, I couldn't get that high with any food, even though I ate like tons of carbs just for, you know, trying it. Yeah. And uh, the lowest I got was 2.5. So that was... Uh, I had a regular intermittent fasting. Then I drank this uh, longevity tea with uh, Rontin Gardens longevity tea with eight different kind of herbs that lower blood glucose. And uh, that was rapid. So it went from 4.7 to 2.5 in an hour. And, sure. uh, you know, I started to feel like, whoa, what's going yeah. on? Then, then yeah. I checked the value and was like, okay, I never drink this uh, until I, if I've eaten something. Yeah. And uh, 
my blood glucose regulation is really, really actually very good because uh, even though I would eat like 100 grams of potatoes, it didn't go that mm. high at all okay. because I had uh, quite a bit of protein, some fats yeah. and some herbs that actually balance the blood sugar yeah. spikes. Okay. Uh, the morning infrared sauna actually elevated uh, elevated the blood glucose quite a bit to about 6.5. Uh, but like 30 minutes after that, it went to about four. Yeah. So my 24-hour average uh, was 4.6 okay. uh, millimoles per liter, or is nanomoles? Uh, I can't recall. But anyhow, the basic millimoles, basic yeah, number. Millimoles per yeah, liter. yeah. And my HbA1c yeah. level was uh, 27, okay. or something like 4.5, I think. So okay. so. Uh, if you think about life extension uh, foundation standards for longevity, this is this is ideal. Mm. And before that, I've been on a ketogenic diet for uh, one and a half years, mm. and uh, I'm basically very uh, highly fat and ketone adapted. So Brilliant. that was also good confirmation. But uh, I think it's it would be essential for everybody, you know, just to find out what you react to. Mm. So uh, I, I can totally relate you with that morning smoothie because uh, mm. I used to do that, you know, way back, but I didn't feel good at all yeah. because of the blood sugar fluctuation. Yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> uh, and I think it's, you know, if I could get CGM here in South Africa, you can get it from a pharmacy. You don't need a doctor's script. It is expensive. Nice. Unfortunately, you know, that's the only problem. It's not cheap, you know, uh, so mm. that's the limitation yeah. there. But I'm going to be doing a lot of coaching off CGM. There's a fantastic company called NutriSense. You know, they've got a platform okay. online. You know, I've been working with uh, Dr. Saladino from Carnivore Code about, uh, you know, keeping a, you know, a stable glucose, which is fascinating. And they, you know, what increases it and how important the spike is the spike more important than the area under the curve. So I think there's a lot of work mm. and I can think a lot of coaching, health coaching can be done off your CGM. What yes, I wanna, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Great. Tell me a little bit about uh, your sleep uh, and the REM sleep and deep sleep. Uh, do you play a large uh, role to that? I mean, I know I've listened to a lot of, uh, you know, podcasts where they say the total sleep is not that important. You need to get two hours of REM sleep, two hours of deep sleep. What is your view on that? Uh, every aspect has some kind of importance. So, so that's my view. Of course, um, if you don't, if you only sleep like five hours, it doesn't really matter how much you get each of the sleep cycles because you're probably gonna be sleep deprived at some point of time. Of okay. course, you can manage with the, the younger you are, you can manage mm. it, but uh, it all has, all has an effect. So you should find your sweet spot on the mm. sleep duration. Okay. And ideally, uh, the longer the period of sleeping without waking, that that has an effect, uh, like a tremendous effect on the on the daytime wakefulness. So if you wake up multiple times per per night, it's gonna affect especially the wakefulness uh, throughout the day. Of course, um, having uh, enough deep sleep is crucial. So that's been my focal point on when I've been biohacking my sleep. And I actually wrote this uh, almost 40 page article on how to optimize and biohack your deep sleep. So it, it wow. is found in Ben Greenfield's site. So basically he asked me to write that. Uh, one and a half years ago, because I showed me, uh, take a look at my overordering data. I had like two hours, 48 minutes of deep sleep and and uh, the sleep was like just perfect for the night. Of course, I don't have that amount every night, but uh, I've been kind of able to biohack my deep sleep from uh, one hour and five minutes to two hours and 11 minutes on average. Wow. Wow. So double. I've been doubling my the amount of deep sleep. So there's a lot of information in, the, in that article. And right. uh, Would it be possible kinds, to put yeah. it on the Made to Thrive site once we become an affiliate? Sure. We'll be able to load yeah. that up and get it on there because I do find that deep sleep is a real problem for a lot of my clients that I've been coaching, yeah. my executives especially. And I found that number one, my overall general biohack, my number one that moves the needle in terms of the way I feel, plus my sleep scores is the infrared sauna. When I do that regularly, my deep sleep improves. When I go away and mm. I can't take it, 
infrared sauna is the sort of, you know, the holy grail to a large degree uh, that helps me with deep sleep. So I'd love to get that article on the Matus Rife site and then we can refer it. I possibly can get it and I'll give it to my website to develop yeah. to put that on. That'll be incredible. Sure, sure. So if you think about health-wise, the deep sleep is the most important mm. uh, physiologically. Yeah. But uh, on the mental and emotional side, you need also REM sleep. Yeah. Or otherwise, you're going to be a train wreck emotionally. Mm. So okay. if you're not having any REM sleep, it mm. is uh, has a toll on your system. So, um, But I've noticed also that if I have a, like a three hours of deep sleep, my REM sleep also goes down. Yeah because yeah. the body is priming more for the deep sleep. Yeah. And it's interesting to see that different kind of days uh, kind of woke different kind of sleep patterns. So yeah. if I have a very intense day, like mentally and not so physically, I tend to have more REM sleep and a little bit less okay. deep sleep and, and then vice versa. And uh, for me, the scores, if I have two hours or more deep sleep and uh, one hour and 30 minutes or more REM sleep mm. based on the aura data, uh, I feel like perfectly fine or yeah. uh, like perfectly fine is, is a underestimate. I feel yeah. very, very good. Yeah. So yeah. I don't need that much REM sleep, at least mm. based on aura ring. Of course, the aura ring measurement is not exact. Yes. It's not exact. So you need to have this uh, brain EEG yeah. measurement device to actually know the, the quantity of, yeah. the, of the REM sleep. Well, I think I like what I like about the aura is it might not be accurate totally, but it's precise in terms yeah, of makes the yeah. same error. And you really yes. want to just have a look <laughs> at trends, you know. So I actually do better. I feel better if I have more REM sleep than deep sleep, you know, mm. from a cognitive point of view. I, I don't feel as refreshed in the morning if my REM sleeps down. And, and that's same, a same. Yeah, that's a concern for me because I can I can shift the deep sleep uh, a lot easier, but I can't shift the REM sleep. I do find, and I'm mm. just throwing it out there, but when I have sex at night, my REM sleep scores improve dramatically. And so I'm trying to convince my wife that my REM steak, sleep steak, steak at night? No, I said sex. Sex at night. Sex? Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I heard steak. Well, I was okay. No, That's no, yeah. no. no, I think yeah. obviously having, um, you know, just having the orgasm, I think uh, I'd yeah. like to know if you know any research on what happens to REM sleep, but mm. my REM sleep will jump 25, 30% uh, if that happens at night um, compared mm, to, you know, my deep sleep, which is easy to improve through, through infrared sauna. Yeah. Uh, well, I, have, I really haven't looked uh, mm. at that uh, perspective, but what I did, I tried to look if I could write a REM sleep optimization article, but I couldn't find enough information okay. or data. So that's kind of a more mystery okay. so how to actually improve that how to actually increase that so yeah. you just have to play around and you know mm. find out what works sex is great <laughs> a lot of endorphins and, yeah. and the connection uh, w with the real person yeah so that, that always helps also emotionally so mm. uh, that that makes quite a bit of sense mm. uh, but i've noticed that uh, for me uh, if i'm calorie you know on a calorie deprivated state i get less REM sleep okay that's so that's 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 been the case like mm. for a long time so if i need to get more REM sleep i just up my calories and especially wow. towards the evening more carbohydrates so okay. uh, carbs for me increase REM sleep right if i'm like super strict keto the REM sleep amount goes uh, a lot lower mm. at, at least for me yeah. and i think seamland has also seen this kind of patterns mm. so uh but this doesn't mean that it's it's uh, true or same for everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. The last thing I know we're coming to the end of the show, and I really appreciate your time, is uh, the, the, the theory of hormesis. And I'm a big fan mm. of hormesis and causing a little bit of stress, you know, exercise being one, fasting being another. But my concern, and I wanted to get your view, is that because people are in this sympathetic state and this fight or flight state, you know, cortisol is a real problem. They've got problems with adrenal mm. fatigue or burnout or stress, whatever you want to call it, that all these little areas of hormesis are actually accumulating and causing more damage in the long term than good. And, you know, I've seen it if I've got a very stressful week, I'm doing presentations or I'm working hard, I really battle with cold thermogenesis. You know, I love the sauna, yeah. I feel better. But if I do something that, that, that I resist, 
it makes it makes me weaker, not stronger. And I don't yeah. know what your view is, or you know what Sim's view. I'd love to get him on. I'd love to hopefully connect with him. But the cumulative effects of hormesis can be more damaging than good. Sure, you're you're like dead on right on this one. So you need, you can think about it as an uh, accumulation of different kind of stressors. So even if you had like hormetic uh, so-called cool, good stress or, or, or a period of you stress, good stress, but you have it too much, the body is still um, pushed towards uh, to, to a like kind of a dif- different differentiation from homeostatic state. And uh, I've noticed that uh, especially with this uh, Finnish traditional saunas with uh, quite a bit of heat. So if I'm very stressed, it doesn't really help. I, mm. I'm there like ah, ah, no, ah, it's too much. Yeah. And then actually the cold feels a lot better. But uh, mm. the same thing with workouts. Uh, if you're like super highly stressed and then you go to do a, like a kick-ass CrossFit workout, it is going to make things worse. Mm. So uh, it is always about the balance. So you're, I think you're right on this. So. You don't want to put yourself into a more <laughs> hormetic stra- like states uh, with different kind of mm-hmm. things uh, unless you feel that you're more into this um, growth mode, which means you're more stable, more in the homeostatic state. Then it would be a lot uh, wiser to incorporate mm-hmm. different kind of hormetic stressors. Great. And my last question for you, Dr. Oli, is that over the many years of coaching people and seeing clients, I find that people battle to maintain changed lifestyles, changed habits, and maintain their sustained transformation. Give us Mm. two sort of key ideas, what keeps people motivated to maintain their, you know, their lifestyle changes, because the research shows that 95% of people would gain the weight that they've lost, and even more weight within five years of that process. So it just seems that people battle to maintain these lifestyle changes. Yeah. So you can, you can actually... Uh, kind of reduce it into a single thing. So when you change a habit, you usually cut something out. So let's say you want to lose weight, you cut carbs yeah. or, or like sugars, but you need to replace that kind of like a hole with something else that's going to be replacing that. So if let's say, okay, I'm cutting out grains, but what, what do I do to put mm. on place for that? So you need to find a, something that uh, gives the same kind of, kind of like a pleasure, yeah. but actually fills the empty hole. Yeah. So in that way, it's a lot easier to make the habitual change because you're not just, you know, taking, being taken away something, mm. but you actually get something that's better yeah. for your system. So in, in that sense, if you think about, diet chains so you can do step by step okay let's move sugar out and you use coconut sugar yeah. or uh, let's move this uh, shitty sugary uh, milk chocolate and you use dark chocolate yeah so you just remove and replace it with better things mm. so uh, that's a more sustainable approach on that of course having this uh, feedback and also uh, kind of like a reward so you need rewards Mm. to keep it sustainable so uh finding out what gives you rewards whether it's from yourself whether it's from a feeling or another person that's that's a highly crucial so so therefore having a coach Mm. having someone supporting you is usually uh, helpful in this kind of situations great thank you so much for your time it's been an absolute privilege to have dr ollie one of the original pioneers so happy to have more biohackers on the Mate to Thrive show sharing their wisdoms. First person who's had blue blocking glasses on that I've interviewed throughout <laughs> the Mate to Thrive show. So I'm really grateful. I'm grateful for your work and hopefully we can form a partnership together. Sure. Uh, it was a pleasure and nice to meet you, Steve. So Great. Where can people our, find yeah. you? Where can they find you? What's, <laughs> where can they go? Yeah, so uh, that, that, that's where I was actually okay, going. Okay, sorry. Mm. So, uh, uh, yeah, thebiohackercenter.com. So yeah. that's basically our, uh, it's going to be a biohacking portal. At the moment, it's a, it's a web shop, uh, which has uh, all of our web courses mm. and different kind of products uh, and so on. Uh, our events are at biohackersummit.com. Okay. So we have a big one in Helsinki 
in in a, in a month or is, in the middle of October. Is that live or is it online? It is both. Okay. No, but it's it's totally live. So okay. about 500 people uh, okay. we're expecting to come there. Uh, we have a big event in Amsterdam next yes. May. So definitely go there once yeah. this pandemic is over. Yeah. All the restrictions are gone, and okay. uh, so that's gonna be a really good one. So biohackersummit.com, and uh, mm-hmm. on social media we have different accounts at biohackingbook.com, at biohackersummit.com, com, not com, but at, at biohackersummit, and also mm-hmm. at health hacking summit. Okay. And my personal account is at Olli Sovi Jarvi. <laughs> okay. Great, great. <laughs> we'll put those in the uh, in the show notes, and uh, we'll start through that yeah. process. But thank and you actually, so much. one more yeah. site. So, yeah. if you really want to upgrade, not only yourself but your work, uh, we have the upgrade workplace, upgradeworkplace.com. So that is that is our most comprehensive course on not not just upgrading the work, the workplace, but also your approach and yourself to work so it is uh, last six weeks it has 42 different modules wow. you basically have a new module every day a new video a new material every single day so wow. well done she's a absolute Welcome. plethora of work and content <laughs> and just inspiring and transforming uh, you know just information for people so well done and i think uh, hopefully we can form that partnership and, and get you on the mate to try site Thank you yeah, so much. Sure. Thank you and be well, everybody. Yeah. Ciao. Cool. Thank you, Dr. Ali.